out of El Paso. We are live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso. TV streaming live on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show, and streaming live on Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When. And this is the place where I say, we say, Texas history begins in El Paso. And then Melissa says, good morning. Well, I say good morning. I say <laughs> it's great to be. It's fall time, the best weather in El Paso time. I love it this time of year. It's Isn't cool. It it's warm. It's great. So I'm glad we're all here. And I also want to remind everyone that they can find us audio streaming live on the Internet via ktsmradio.com, where you click on the iHeartRadio link and you go on. And you got a hist- history moment second hour? Yes, it's about the New Mexico Saint Painters. Oh. Which a lot of people don't know a lot about. Oh, there's a lot of history people don't know about, oh, yeah. but we're, we're going to get to some of that in New Mexico. Speaking of a guy from New Mexico, his name is Dr. Troy Ainsworth. Good morning. Good morning, Jackson. Good morning, Melissa. Good morning. Troy. Welcome here, dude. Hey, it's good to be back to see you in person, both of you, and to be and thank you for the invitation to come back oh, and be in studio. Indeed. I good good that you did it. So we've got you here to talk about Henry Trost and not just Henry Trost himself, but the works of Henry Trost. And some of them are outside of El Paso, and so we don't ever focus on those much. But let's take a look at Henry Trost, not only on pictures, but in reality. And if you got that coming up, Andrew, we got Henry Trost. And the thing about Henry Trost is he is a big name if you look into the history of El Paso and the architecture. Very much so. And very frequently, Trost is considered a regional architect. You know, and unfortunately, that carries a certain, um, it's almost, derogatory in some ways you know well you're you're pretty good regionally but if you really look at the work of the his overall body of work and all of the places that he actually uh designed and built buildings it would be a very limited statement to say he is regional so why is he important in el paso let's just get that done so we, we can see that the preponderance of important buildings in downtown El Paso or by the design of Trost and Trost Architects. So um, it it is fair to say Henry Trost designed downtown El Paso, a major metropolitan area that has um, an international flavor, of course. Um, Very talented architect. Not many architects can say that a large number of the major buildings in a downtown city of, of our size were designed by one architect. So An- he is very significant. Anson Mills laid out the streets, but Henry Trost populated the buildings. Because, there you go. Because businessmen hired him. Yes. Okay, so you can stand at San Jacinto Plaza and pretty much go around the entire plaza, including the now missing building. On, mm-hmm. uh, on the they, north side. They blew, blew away in 19, uh, 20, uh, 2012. Yep. But, and that was a shame. That's another matter. The whole thing about uh, Trost, though, he, he had so many things going on. Right. That he, it's hard to realize he actually got out of town once in a while. Now we have a, a picture. What's his first one coming up here? Uh, the first uh, residence we're looking at, this is, uh, uh, that was just there is the Douglas Gray House as well, right here uh, on 1205 North El Paso Street. So he did one El Paso building. He least. did uh, one El Paso residence. Yes. The reason I bring this up is because the Marcus Aurelius Smith, Mark Smith, Mm -hmm. the Honorable Mark Smith, the home uh, that we see, uh, the portion of it there uh, in Tucson was built in 1899. And Douglas Gray, who was in uh, a businessman who had mining interest here in El Paso, he was familiar with that home in Tucson and commissioned Trost to design a very similar home. In fact, they're almost carbon copies. Oh, I see. So he copied Tucson. Right. Okay, now the important thing about this home, when it was built in, in here in El Paso, the Gray House, when it was built in 1904, mm-hmm. wow, no one had seen anything like this. Yeah, because it was it, unique. Exactly, and it relies upon that it was short-lived, but for a period of time in, in this country, there was a, um, a, a popularity for exotic architectural language. So you're looking at Egypt. The you're looking age, yeah. Right, you're, you're looking outside of, of classical roman greek yeah and you're looking away from georgian or colonial in in the eastern seaboard and finding inspiration in other corners of the world so yeah. so egypt the mediterranean all of a sudden you, you begin to see homes in places tucson arizona el paso texas 
built in those uh, those designs. Well, also, wasn't it the design in some of those, uh, like I said, for the Mediterranean and such, where they had been around a lot longer and they had uh, envi- um, energy saving in the sense of cooler, warmer, like the adobes were. Exactly. But you had ways of the bright colors, whites and things like that, and tile roofs and added, you know, a little bit from Spain and Mexico, but also the Mediterranean. So Precisely. And you also are prioritizing the eve. So mm-hmm. you have a deep overhang. You're basically reflecting heat and energy mm-hmm. away. So um, I like to say that Henry Trost was um, in part responsible for the idea of green architecture yeah. green. before we ever use the phrase green architecture. A lot of big windows. And- right. And you, and the, you, you allow for ventilation. Yes, the ventilation. orientation of a home on a site to catch prevailing winds and also to uh, uh, prevent late afternoon heat. So you're not going to have a home facing due west in El Paso if, if you can avoid it. You know, you, you avoid <laughs> No, that. you don't want that. <laughs> you don't need an oven. You, you need a You can do home. an angle, yeah. Like ours is kind of south southwest. Right. So that's not bad. And, and you lose a little bit of that temperature. So um, I know we're going to prioritize aesthetics and architectural design. But there's also something very interesting about Trost understanding uh, uh, regulating and moderating cooling and comfort and temperature. We went, did we basically go from Adobe to Trost buildings? No. What was in the middle? It was oh. the Victorian wood. When, yeah, when we start with the trains came is when you started seeing more wood. Yeah. I mean, because they could bring it in from Redoso or wherever it was right. coming from. And they started making bricks here yeah. big time. There, there's a house yeah. in downtown El Paso on, I want to say, McGoffin Street that is a solid uh, the, the house was built from redwood from K- Northern California. Wow. It's all redwood. Right. The floors, the walls, the out, the, the, sh- the shutters. And they, they, re- I think they refurbished it. Is it still around? Yeah, it's still there. It's wow. an amazing little house. Now, now that would be, um, considering the amount of, um, of lumber that would have been brought in after 1881 moving forward. Uh, so at that time is when you see the transition begin. Uh, uh, incrementally from earth adobe to wood frame and then at the end of the century uh, with the whole notion of reinforced concrete that the firm uh, trust and trust are working on so it's in it's into the early years of the 20th century jackson that what you're talking about when that transition really accelerated and it wasn't all at once for trust it kind of rolled right. in right exactly exactly keep in mind i'm you know, when he arrived here in El Paso in 1902, 1903, um, his passing was in September of 1933. So he had full three decades of work right here. But the firm had an office over in Phoenix and in Albuquerque. And so they're designing buildings all throughout Arizona, New Mexico, western part of Texas, and northern Mexico in Estado de Chihuahua. So you have, you know, to get back to it, is he a regional architect? Well, he worked no, in a really big region, if yeah. you really want to look at it. Three yeah. states, at least you did. Three know. states, two countries, and, and, and that doesn't include his early work. Now, keep in mind, he was born in 1860 in Toledo, and his twin brothers, who he worked with, um, were born 16 years after. They were bo- both born in 1870. Another generation. Yeah. A, a completely different generation. Yeah. So when he arrives here, he it, in 1902, um, well, you know, he came That's over when from Gustavus Tucson. was here. He right. was, came for the Carnegie Library as the managing architect for that. Precisely. Yeah, and then Trost kind of, it's kind of like they all come, got here at once. That's well, right. Brother because, came later, but. because Henry was over in Tucson. Yeah. So he, he wrote his brother in essence. I haven't, you know, I've not read that letter, but well, in essence, Hey, big brother, wide open opportunity. Come to El Paso. The first Trost you mentioned, was he here and uh, having done other Carnegie libraries? I, I don't know about his past along those lines, but I know that he was specifically hired to, to be the, the architectural manager for the Carnegie Library. He also being a well-known, or well, well, to, well-known architect in his uh, it, Ohio is where and, he was at. Carnegie and was his, blown away for huh? the Carnegie was was taken down for oh uh, the library, the, the library, yeah. the parking area, the park, yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah, all that stuff, which was a shame. I mean, they could actually it was in the location of the, where the museum is today, the history museum is yeah. today in the library. 
which it was a beautiful building. That was a great spot. This picture. They should have, they had an amphitheater. They had all mm -hmm. kinds of things in that part. But that's how he ended up here also. And the right. combined between the team. And then they brought the brother, which was, uh, I always get him. Gustafus was the architect. Uh, Adolphus was the engineer, the structural right. engineer who put their, the concrete. their drawings together. The concrete guy. Well, yeah, he was concrete. But I mean, in the sense that he put, he, he could take the drawing and make it work. You can draw anything you want, but if you cannot structurally make it sound, you know, you can't do anything. Well, the concrete made a huge difference, right? It, yeah, but I mean, it it was, it, there's structural in all areas between concrete and the wood and all the different uh, things that they were using. Well, I thought that was a big deal. They, they, they came in and, and put the reinforced concrete the first, in first, the yeah. Mills building. Mills, oh, Mills building is an early example, as well as the, uh, um, the Rio Grande uh, Bank building, which is the, the uh, Abdu building. Okay. Okay. You had the Capels building and then the little Capels building which um unfortunately um i think it was victim of a fire uh in in or about 1941 and it it uh, of course it's no longer standing well you want to take on some of these other out of town stuff yeah number yeah, three yeah, because there. I, I find we're we're getting back into city limits oh no i'd lo <laughs> love to talk yeah. about Trost in yeah, general of course well, of course the, the first multi-story uh, reinforced concrete building in the downtown area was the five-story richard capels building which there you saying. go yeah there you so go. we got to go to number three there las cruces what is that all right um one of my favorite designs that trust made this is uh judge holt um herbert b and maud holt that is their home this residence is one of uh, the more intriguing ones. You see on the end, I mean, basically it's a crucifix form, okay? Okay. More or less. And on the ends, you see the ubiquitous, um, that parabolic parapet. The Alamo-looking thing. The Alamo parapet. Yeah. Okay. So we have buildings that that, uh, that particular element appears in. Yeah. Okay. That was a frequent um, signature design element. But we also have right in the middle... That is the the hub, is the tower. Tower, yeah. With that with that kind of um, oriental roof system, almost looks like a pagoda in its design. This is a a this is a very um, ambitious design. Mm -hmm. There is no other residence that completely appears in the similar manner, and so this house is actually about a quarter of a mile. From uh, from City Hall in Las Cruces, and so when I am needing to get out and walk for a few minutes, I will walk, walk down, down walk there. down there just to have a look at the at the Holt residence. It's a beautiful beautiful building, and it was constructed in 1908. Um, has been not used as a residence for a number of years. It is a law office at the at the present time. Now, is that a combination of Mediterranean uh, or, or almost Oriental in the sense and uh, Spanish, Spanish? There's a lot of the um, uh, trust was drawn on a lot of the uh, the regional Spanish influence. He really mixed things up. But this one's really a mongrel. Yeah, that, when you that, <laughs> that parapet <laughs> roof. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, what what style is this? Well, why don't you just enjoy it for the aesthetic? You said yeah. mongrel. <laughs> yes. Well, it is. It's a Heinz 57. Yeah, it's got, it's, so many it's got a little elements. bit of everything in yeah. it. And, wow. and, and I think that's what makes it work because it's almost like a, an experiment. And it is what the, the Holtz wanted. They wanted something pretty daring and something that would, something that would uh, stand out. And it it has done so since and in Las Cruces that would don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah I think that does yeah. completely. because it's I would right love there on the Alameda Boulevard. It is, you know, of course, in 1908. Yeah. That's a that's not paved naturally. You know, well, so what did he do? Did he go looking for work in other cities, or did they come looking for him? A lot of times looking for him because wow. keep in mind, um, early part of 20th century, there are not a great number of professional architects. Okay. Oh, so they they sought him so out. So he would be okay. sought out. So his advertisements, the firm would advertise in newspapers. Okay, Arizona, and then he get the job. Throughout Texas, New Mexico, well, there Colorado. Was, there was a bunch of architects in El Paso at the time. Uh, Otto Thurman, I believe, was another one. Otto, yep. and who was it designed the uh, the uh, Mabel woman's Welch. Mabel, Mabel uh, Welch. the woman's club was? Oh no, woman's that was Otto Thurman. That was him. 
And Mabel, Mabel Welch was Mabel another Welch one. Mabel Welch was unique. She was the first, I think she was the first architect in El Paso. Her husband had been one and he died and yep. she kept yeah, it going. Well, she was the designer. She just, she came up, she was the one that came up with kitchen oh, cabinets the and brains. the design. Yeah, she kind of put it into a home, whereas he built the outside, but she put the home to the right. inside, plus being an interior designer. And then she went on and went back to school and got her degree in architecture. Oh, wow. It is time for After a break here. here. Troy Ainsworth is sitting here talking and he is a doctor of, uh, what are you a doctor of? Um, land use management, planning and design, specializing in historic preservation. And you're, the, you're the first guy I ever heard <laughs> explain Henry Trost in any detail. I was at a historical commission meeting and all of a sudden you showed up and explained things. Wow. We got that how here. How many years, how many years back that was, was that? Uh, at least, uh, last 20, century. 20, yeah. 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 It was a century <laughs> ago. Century. Actually, it was the last century. That's 22 right. years. It's 23 years. Yeah. All right. We've got Troy here for the hour, two hours and we're going to talk about mm -hmm. Trost buildings around and in and outside of El Paso. And in the meantime, we're going to take a break here and come back. Do you have Facebook yet? Because I've got I'll, a few things here. I got, I've got Chris a Martin. Bunch of them. Yeah, Chris Martin's listening, and uh, oh, he's he's still over at Overland Hotel in Kochi, Nevada. He's with the firefighting teams up there. Columbia City, Indiana. There's a new one. Yeah, that's uh, Jean Trimmerhelm. Okay, and we have Cindy Balazio. Hello, Cindy. Hello. Oh, she asked a question for you. Has anyone studied Trost architecture in northern Mexico? We'll get to that after the break. Don't forget okay. that question. Got it. Angie Just up in Colorado, Rocky Mountain High up there. Angie's up there. We got Mark, uh, Mark Flores is somewhere. Uh, Las Cruces is rep. A lot of people looking at us from across the planet, and they look at it on Facebook. And, uh, Andrew, how are we doing on streaming today? We're looking good? Okay, and so you got streaming basically on Facebook today. Andrew J. Polk in the control room. Thank you for being there and, and pumping out the hits, as we say. Well, let's just throw the number out in case you had an actual Trost-related question. What do you think? 915-544-5876 or 915-544-KTSM. Many retire. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 
Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. After, After the, the show, show, I will look at the email, ephistory 690 at gmail.com. So if you want to send a message to us, that's one way to do it. We are the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. Because you can go there for our weekly promo announcements. Did you happen to see how many we have? Like 7, uh, 70, 79, 85, I was the number I was looking at. That's a lot of people yeah. on, on the promo. Also, no, they're not the whole deal here. But they uh, weekly promos are on that uh, Facebook page. Also, we have a TV channel to see free videos about El Paso history on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. El Paso Gold DVDs are there for free. I put about 20 years worth of work into a bunch of DVDs. They're on there for nada. But they're but they're good quality. It looks like a DVD. You don't have to get a DVD player. Also, 20 segments of our ABC7 series uh, called El Paso History TV. They're on ABC7 in the newscast. I don't know, have you ever seen any of those? a bunch of those. Yeah. It was Bernie. Bernie. Bernie was the guy you saw. Yes, and so uh, Andrew and I have shot those and produced those and wrote those and put them on. And uh, we thank Bernie for his deal on that. 20 segments. They're archived now also on YouTube.com, El Paso History TV. And if you watch, the, it's about three minutes each. Mm -hmm. You do not have to invest a lot of time to figure out what we're doing here in El Paso. But you probably should because you weren't taught your history in right. this town. You know that? And it's you'll learn teachers. a little something. That's right. Well, that's just it. If, you, if you're listening now, you might want to expand that and check those things out. And new, we have new subscribers all the time. All right. Here's an announcement. I got this other announcement, not on not on your page. It okay. came in so late. The El Paso County Historical Society is pleased to announce this year's selection to the 2021 Hall of Honor. Colbert Colwell was a Santa Fe trader, lawyer, district court and Supreme Court justice, and an El Paso uh, U.S. collector. And what they do is two deceased and two living. So that one would be gone. Here's another one's gone. Um, uh, Joseph Ray, professor of political science and sixth president of Texas Western College slash UTEP. 1960 to 68. And here's a live one. Jack Maxson, founder of the local favorite Jackson's restaurant. This is a new group this year. He's a restaurateur, business professional, and a civic leader. And the other living one is Mary Haynes. She was no, the first female county commissioner in El Paso. She passed away. Oh, no, 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 no. Mary Haynes. Yeah. Oh, that's right. She has to be living. Sorry. She has to. This one is the living category. Mary Haynes, first female county commissioner in El Paso and past president of the El Paso County Historical Society. So that came in late. Well, October and November, we have ghost tours at Concordia Cemetery from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And you have to RSVP for fees. And you can give them a call at 915-274-9531. And those tours are Saturday, October 2nd and October 9th. And they're being put on by the Paso del Norte Paranormal Society. October 16th, <clears throat> there's a walking tour at Concordia, by Concordia Heritage Association. At, and you can call them for information at 497-1126. And also coming up, which is really, really great, was they've got their fundraiser coming up to where you can have a lock-in investigation in the cemetery with uh, paranormal investigators just for you and your friends and such. But it's your special day. And the tickets are only $10 each, and the raffle will be held November 6, 2021. And tickets can be purchased online via the uh, PayPal, pay, uh, PayPal on the Concordia Heritage Association's Facebook page or in person the day of the drawing November 6th during the annual Dia de los Muertos Festival <laughs> that's going to be held in Concordia Cemetery. You can celebrate uh, Dia de los Muertos at Concordia Cemetery, and that'll be located at 3700 Yandel, November 6th, 2021, at 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And this exciting one-day event features revelers dressed, dressed in, in traditional, traditional Mexican, Mexican clothing, clothing with skulls painted, painted on their faces, faces altaras, altaras uh, decorated, uh, decorated graves, face painters, tarot card, card readings, art, uh, uh, all, crafts, all crafts, all kinds, all kinds of, of other great stuff. Uh, food and local vendors will be ha on hand. I think Six Guns of Shady Ladies is going to be there and kill the dead again. We're going to be the <laughs> living dead, I think. Uh, live entertainment includes stilt walkers, 10-foot 
Mohiganda skeletons roaming the cemetery, Aztec fire dancers, storytelling, and Old West fights to thrill the young I'm told they're not Aztec. I should have taken that off your page. Yeah, they're fire. They're just fire dancers. Uh, let's see. So admission costs is five dollars a person, a person, and children six and under are free. Dresses Calacas or Catrinas. For more information, call four nine seven one one two six or go to Concordia Cemetery dot org. It's a busy place over there. Yeah, it's lovely. also it's that time of year. Troy, we got a, a brief moment here for another break. Before another break, you want to take on one more building here. We're talking about trust buildings outside of El Paso primarily, and you've got the Second Owls Club. That's Number right. Four. Over in Tucson, uh, this particular building that we're looking at, the uh, second Owls Club, of course, that suggests that there is a first Owls Club. Do we need to know about that? Oh, it's what it's an elegant building as well. It's a fraternal organization there in oh. Tucson. And, and so this was the meeting hall. Um, this building is standing. It is extant. Um, it's pretty. It's a pretty bold design. Um, one of the things I really like about it is. If you notice on the front elevation in the center, you have, in essence, an altar screen that you would see in a Spanish colonial. You have a, you have a second picture of the same building, right? Uh, yes, there may be there. Uh, yeah, 4A. Yes, I believe that there's two pictures that, that uh, we have today of that particular building. Um, one of the, uh, uh, in one of the photographs, you can see the Santa Canalina Mountains in the, in the background. Oh, and and so it it just kind of shows you, uh, it suggests just how barren the terrain is right there in Tucson in 1902 when it was built. Now that area, of course, is developed, and so you don't have that view anymore. But you if you can see far off behind the building itself, you can see the mountains in the distance, and and so uh, the exciting thing about the Owls Club, Owls, uh, the Owls Club. That's right. Um, again, nearby. The, uh, the Mission Church at Tubac, which is south of Tucson, down towards the international uh, 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 frontier, in the church there is, the, is a uh, beautiful altar screen. And I think that is where Trost had the inspiration to replicate that general idea for oh. the exterior elevation on this fraternal uh, social organization there in Tucson. That's cool. You know, what I find really interesting is the roof drains. That, they because are, it was flat, it's a flat roof uh, structure, and those drains are so far extended mm -hmm. out. So that, whereas a lot of problem you have with the old, we had it in California mm -hmm. with our roof drains because we had a Spanish style roof house, right? And it was flat, and it would drain down the side of the house, causing right. all kinds of damage to the the, the foundation. Stucco, the foundation, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. These, these, I mean, they, they must look crazy when it rains. And and what's interesting are, are the uh, the mouths on those yeah. canales. Yes, do yeah. not look anything like a canale, right? No. I mean, they have the same purpose. They they will drain water away from the building, right? And they extend quite, you know, they're a foot in a, uh, away from the edge yeah. of the building, a foot or more, and they have almost a comical yeah. opening. You know, it's almost Doctor Seuss, like a face. Like yeah. yes, it looks like a musical instrument more yeah, than anything else. Yeah, put that one back else. up, Andrew. Let's see that again. And so That's bizarre. It is, and to my knowledge, he did not re uh, reuse that same idea again for a different building that those drain pipes those canales only appear on this building so it's an interesting little oh, bit of history about the building itself somebody I, must have told me it rains real good huh? yeah, yeah. Well, I, yeah well they they get like we do they get the monsoons there too so i'm just uh, right. wondering what you know in, in the mindset like i said i've seen some extended out but not quite like that no this is um um this is a distinctive feature that does not appear i mean uh, architects are notorious about recycling yeah. ideas and, and rightfully so. I mean, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're designing a building. And Trost was quite admirable about reusing his better ideas. Th those canales never appear elsewhere to my knowledge, to my knowledge. Taking so. a break here. We got to do that here once in a while. Troy, I want to <laughs> thank the guy in the control room, Andrew G. Polk Monday through Friday. He is on the air at talk El Paso. He is the host chief cook and bottle washer today he's just doing bottle washer and cook <laughs> that see and another uh, uh, another radio guy got his wings i don't know what that is <laughs> thank you andy for what you do and then what you do monday through friday all right taking a break and we shall come back and we can talk more about the facebook people there they seem to be accumulating now uh there's a whole bunch more of them now than earlier and i hope the pictures help y'all maybe comment if you don't mind on the facebook people and uh, tell us what you think of the pictures and if you're only on radio 
you got to go on. The, and we have this archive when we're done. It'll be archived right there on Facebook. And I've been, I've been starting two weeks ago to put them also archiving on YouTube. So we've got them clean on YouTube. We'll tell you how to find that. So uh, what do you got? Well, I was just looking at Margaret Smith, who is the granddaughter of, uh, One of Gustavus. Them. And she had she she pointed out that what brought Henry Trost to, to uh, from Tucson to El Paso was the purpose of submitting plans for the Bailey Hotel, which was to be built on the corner of Mesa and Main Street. So that's what brought him here. Oh, and now with this new program, Andrew's got that comet actually under oh, us. There we go. On cool. on, on TV there. Radio on TV is a little weird, but we're getting used we're to getting it. We're getting used to it. Oh, okay. we'll man, it's here. All right, take a break. Back in a moment, Andrew. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso history. Got a bunch of stuff to tell you about. New additions to the celebrations of our mountain calendar include Floral Fest on October the 9th, Waco Tanks Interpretive Fair on October 16th and 17th, and celebrate Earth Science Day at UTEP on October 23rd. Looking past the first weekend in October are four more great events. Hike Picacho Peak in Box Canyon, Native American Medicinal Plants of the Chihuahua Desert. Both are on October the 9th, October 10th. Hike to the B-36 crash site and memorial. Go to celebmtns.org for info or contact Diego himself, Jim Tolbert, 525-7364. And just speaking of the Waco Tanks in 27th Annual Interpretive Fair, they're back on for the first time, Saturday, October 16 and 17. Been off for a couple of years. Been, well, they're, they're trying to emerge from a trying year, aren't we all? And are excited to provide outlets once again for the community to get out and explore. And as in years past, this year's Interpretive Fair, free opportunity for the public to learn and connect with the local environment and cultures, traditional performers, rock climbing, call them up, 857-1135, extension 221. We want to remember everybody to support our local spon- our lo- local sponsors here, and one of them is Pepe's Restaurant, where they serve authentic New Mexican-style cuisine and are located at 6761 Donovan Drive, and you can also call them at 877-2152. Is he going? For- I don't know. I have, I'm, I'm not. I'm- For takeout and catering, Pepe's is home of the one and only margarita. Look. Oh, he's got a thumbs up. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Troy will be at I'll be there. I plan on going. So you can come yeah. and harass him. Okay. <laughs> Looking for a company to manage your rental properties, then you need to call Monterey Asset Management. And uh, they also have a wonderful website at m1ep.com or call them at 915 592 4549. If you'd like to buy, sell, or rent a home, then you need to call Patrick Tuttle, a top producing realtor at Legacy Real Estate Services. Patrick's phone number is 915 588 1850. And another great show sponsor is State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson. He's like a good neighbor, but with a better phone number, 915-581-0000. Call Ralph for all your insurance needs today. And he also has insurance in New Mexico now. So if you have a vacation home, He's licensed you now. can take uh, all your business here and get it all done in New Mexico and Texas. What do you got? We, have a, we have a question. Did you not read a question a few yes. moments ago from a from one of the listeners? Cindy Malazzo wants to know about uh, Trost in northern New Mexico. Um, the exact number of buildings that the firm designed in Estado de Chihuahua uh, is not uh, exactly known. That is an area, I think, <laughs> of research that is is uh, open for a great deal of uh, further investigation. They're yet to be found. Yeah, yet ah. to be found. Cindy, if but you know the, one, put it on Facebook. But there are several buildings, and we're, we're, we're going to have a look at one. In fact, I can see it on the screen, uh, um, a drawing that uh, Henry uh, uh, designed uh, in about 1920. This is for a school in uh, Ciudad Chihuahua. And what is in, important about this design is that if, uh, if you look at other examples, Gadsden High School in Anthony, New Mexico, 
um, the high school in Fabens, Texas, the original earlier high school, it's predicated upon a very similar design. Yeah. So the, the firm, oh my gosh, I don't know how many public school buildings they designed for towns and communities. Uh, it is an extensive number. Well, it's um, like the school that's in Ciudad, Wada, uh, Ciudad Chihuahua, excuse mm-hmm. me, in, uh, it's also it looks a lot like the front of the owl building, like you were yep. saying in Tucson. Yeah, there you go. Uh, and very much of a balanced uh, front elevation. You know, you have a central porch, a central element such as the, uh, like the, the altar screen yeah. uh, that you see on the owl's building. And, and you know, a very balanced window, uh, a fenestration pattern, you know, a lot of symmetry in the school house design but a lot of a lot of looks like the architecture you see in mexico city it, it is so and that's kind of bringing that north because north is always kind of like the forgotten world in mexico you right know? It's they're the Norte, yeah they're up on the frontier and that's this right. is this is very classical that period exactly and, and chihuahua is a unique city too because it is. the simple fact they do have those buildings you have the french influence from yes. when the french were controlling mexico it's, it's an interesting city architecturally very rich mm-hmm. absolutely you want, to go, you want to go back on your picture list and pick up uh which one uh, Fra- did you fancy Franci- did franciscan let's, let's go back to the franciscan franciscan please. number five yeah. what do you got there? all righty um the franciscan hotel uh was originally designed and in, in the early 20s it was completed in uh 1923 and was at its dedication during that year the albuquerque journal um the albuquerque journal praised this particular building as well as the First National Bank building that were that was completed at the same time in downtown Albuquerque, both of those buildings are are by Trost. Well, and, that's that's northern New Mexico. Well, that's um, uh, it's north of Sun uh, Sunport Boulevard in Albuquerque. So yes, it is northern New Mexico. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I've below the airport is that's right. That's, that's right. That's a bizarre building because it has that Pueblo influence. It does. And then you have like a Chicago, like think of, you know, skyscraper type building at, that, at the same time. It's like, passes I, again, like the one in Las Cruces. I have to be, I have to be honest about this one. Please um, do. This, this building, it, it, it unfortunately was demolished and it required three months of time in 1972 to bring it down. I believe it. Okay. So the engineering in that, in the Franciscan hotel, it was, it was built to last okay? like a brick stash house yes absolutely <clears throat> and so it required a lot of effort to to take this building down um that happened it, here in a mirror building right absolutely in el paso yeah oh my god yeah and and see the the thing is it is a pueblo revival uh inspired design so it very much is in keeping with the uh with the history and tradition in new mexico with the building history that predates um Onyate, uh, Coronado, you know, prior to the 16th century. Well, do you think people are beginning to get the idea to save these things? I hope so. Because, is there any more under a, a duress potential? Well, Albuquerque has already lost its two most prominent oh, uh, early 20th century hotels, the Alvarado and and the uh, Franciscan. And so there was there was some lamentation and, you know, gnashing of teeth. If only here in Albuquerque, we had a historic hotel like they have the La Fonda in Santa Fe, people would come here. And my response is, you did. You had two of them, two of the most elegant hotels in all of the American Southwest, and you tore them down. You didn't want to yep. take care of them. Developers take note. There's money in there to be had there in Texas. There is money. Yes, there right. is money to be had. So we're going to look at a number of uh, uh, several different hotels. Uh, the next one. Well, we got to take a break here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So you're, you're going to go to number six, El Capitan next? You bet. We're okay. going to Van Horn here in a moment. Taking a break here, looking at Facebook uh, real quick. You got new people? Oh, I'm typing a note back to uh, okay, Margie, Re- uh, Margie Benton because she was. we went real quick on our announcements. And so I'm going to post the link to the Celebration of Our Mountains uh, hike Excellent. if she's interested. Oh, yeah, there's good stuff coming up here. Yeah, some good All right, stuff. We shall take a break on the El Paso History Radio Show. Back in a moment. If you are a local business, you are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. 
bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com, and you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to YouTube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Want to mention TalkinRockRadio.com. That's Rick Kern's music podcast, TalkinRockRadio.com, and he's got all kinds of interesting music history there. He'll be on in a, about a month or so, and uh, he's going to bring him a, some, a real musician with him. Okay, also round up at the El Paso Corral of the Westerners, Friday, October 15th, at the Holiday Inn in uh, El Paso West, 900 Sunland Park at I-10. The program is Frontier Forts Around El Paso by John Hamilton. That's something he did on here. Hey, 6 p.m., cost of dinner program, 20 bucks. RSVP to 759-9538. you got to do that by Monday the 11th. And submitted by Deputy Sheriff Patricia Kidney. Watch out for her. Five nine one two three two six. What do you got? Oh, uh, let's see. I had. Uh, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to point out that uh, Bernie reminded me that next month in the Texas Historical <clears throat> Foundation magazine, they're going to be doing stories on us from both Margaret and from Max Grossman. Oh, excellent! So we'll be spreading out across because that Good. magazine goes around the country. Also, you have something next weekend with uh, something in Marathon. There is a um, a conference that is going on in oh. in Marathon. 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 That's right. <laughs> um, it will be held at the Gage Hotel, oh. uh, which we're going to have a look at here in a moment. And um, um, uh, in fact, one of the presenters is Max Grossman. He's uh, among the list of presenters. Basically, it's an overview of the uh, of the totality of history. In the Big Bend region. So that's the totality. It's uh, totality. Yes. Uh, For information about that particular conference, you can contact the Gage Hotel directly in in Marathon, Texas. 
their information is readily available. You say it marathon? Well, I do. That's, what, that's okay. the way they pronounce yeah. it. It's marathon. Oh, yeah. I heard it marathon. No, well, marathon. Anyway, yeah, go to El Capitan uh, Hotel Van Horn. Well, just up the highway from marathon is whatever <laughs> uh they're in van horn texas the gateway of course uh, how it was promoted the gateway up to the um uh carlsbad caverns to the north and oh yeah big Bend to the south so van horn was strategically located uh, the el capitan hotel uh designed in 1929 completed the following year um was a quite the paradise of the chihuahuan desert for quite a long time uh, sometime uh, 30 some odd years ago, or perhaps a little bit more, uh, no longer in operation, sat vacant for a period of time. And now, um, within the last few years, it's probably been about eight years or so, maybe a little more. It has been restored. Who did it? Um, the oh. Duncans. Yes. Joe the Duncans, and Lana right. Duncan. And they've since sold it. So I don't I, know. I believe that's yeah, right. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't yeah, know who the, the current owner they, they, in fact, they own, they uh, own the one in Marfa and also uh, That's right. the, the, the Paisano in Marfa Paisano and Rio Dosa. They bought the old uh, lodge. They did. That's right. And lodge. And uh, to your point a little bit ago, Jackson, when you said, hey, uh-huh. developers, pay attention. There's money to be made in preservation. Uh, the Duncans are certainly the embodiment of that oh, yeah. idea. They spent a lot, but then they got a lot of it back in tax. Uh, in tax credits. and. By putting these hotels like the Capitan in Van Horn, putting them back into productive use, and they're very attractive buildings, and that people who travel through will stop here rather than stay at the uh, the local, uh, more recently oh, yeah. designed. Let's take a quick look at you the gauge it. on our way out for the break here. We, we'll talk about it, it later a little bit. Yes. But the gauge hotel is the place you're talking the about. Gauge hotel. Fabulous. I went, we went down there just to see the gauge, but then we went down to Big Ben, yada, yada. Right, right. And, and you're going down there next weekend for this, this conference. The, the, the conference it will be held right there. In, in And this is a modest hotel design, and yet it is one of the most um, um, interesting of Trost hotel designs in the entire trans it's, it's a delight to go down the highway and you see railroad tracks and farms and stuff and look at this hey. and there is a hey, beautiful and building jp Bryan restored it that's right, right back after the break here with troy ainsworth we got a bunch of more buildings to go a bunch of more stories to tell top of the hour we got melissa in a history moment this is gonna be a wonderful thing see you next hour you are listening to a break in our facebook streaming of the el paso history radio show which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. 
Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call Certified Property Manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm Agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020 with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our video section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV. El Paso History Moment produced by Melissa Sargent. Yay! And that's for the El Paso History Alliance page. And her story today is about retablos in New Mexico. The St. Peters. A tradition of religious painting flourished in New Mexico in the years prior to statehood in 1912. Introduced by the Spanish as a means of converting a largely illiterate Indian population to Catholicism, retablos became popular throughout the Southwest. Retablos originally were painted on tin, but in New Mexico, self-taught artists used materials largely derived from nature, mixing their own paint pigments to decorate roughly cut wooden panels. And while the images recall folk art traditions, it was important that this pictorial history of the saints followed church guidelines. Retablos were worshipped in churches as well as private homes during their heyday in the 18th and 19th centuries. More history next week on El Paso History Moments. I'm Melissa Sargent for the El Paso History Alliance. <laughs> We're talking on the radio again here. By all means, these guys are having a party. But the, yeah. the, what the, you do this here for? Uh, who do you do this for? I do this for the El Paso History Alliance, and you know we want to make sure that everybody who has or wants to know more history, you need to visit these Facebook pages. And the El Paso History Alliance, of course, is one. And they're a group of historians who promote the history and culture of El Paso, and is managed by Max Grossman and Mark Stone. And don't forget, remember in El Paso when with thousands of picture stories and much more. And it's managed by Gar- Barbara Given Bainey and her team of volunteer editors for the page. They got a bunch of them, man. She's the main bottle washer. Yeah. You also have Margaret Smith, Rick Duncan as admin, moderators, Ken Weiss, Craig Hayes, Rick Nahara, and Isaac Williams, a cast of thousands. Getting paid nothing, but they do a great job as volunteers. You ever go look at that page? I do. Oh, I do. man. The yeah. archive pictures, Troy is yeah. sitting here. Yep. Hello. Hello yeah. again. Well, now you know. I don't. I haven't looked for trust pictures on there, but I bet there's some in there. Um, in my opinion, you can never have enough photographs of the trust trust buildings oh, and yeah. drawings. Well, where do you want to go next? We got something up there in Q. What is that? Uh, Hotel Pasano. That is the Hotel Pasano in lovely Marfa, Texas. Marfa. Marfa. I can say it that way. You can say it like that. I got gotcha. you. Go for it. Marfa. Marfa. Oh, uh, the uh, the Pasano, uh, one of. I think one of the most elegant architectural treasures all throughout the uh, Chihuahuan Desert region, uh, designed in 1927, it was one of the earlier hotels that that the uh, architectural firm designed within the region. Uh, it also, uh, in that year, was the, the the construction of the Gage Hotel down the highway or down the railroad tracks, if you will, in um, in Marathon, but. Uh, the Paisano Hotel, um, which has been a landmark for 
for uh, the region since the late 1920s. It was the hotel in the early 1950s when the filming, uh, the, the cast and the crew stayed for the filming of the movie Giant. Ah, now you say it, Paisano? Paisano. What do you say if it's in El Paso? Well, that's a good question. Uh, that road I... down down in the southern part of the city. <laughs> that's the same spelling. It's the same spelling. Well, but... it's the, the meaning of the word, too. Yeah. Paisano, yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah friend. Yeah. Yep, countryman. Okay. But anyway, um, this is in Marfa. This is in Marfa, Texas. Got yes, it. sir. So here we have a photograph of uh, a more contemporary view of the of uh, the hotel. Oh yeah, there's and, two of them there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a there's the uh, uh, the ink on linen drawing from Trost himself, and then we have this photograph, uh, which is right. The, the hotel is located just uh, across the street from That's, the um, from the Presidio County Courthouse. That's a bunch of trees right there. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah okay, those yeah. Italian cypress trees. Got and, um, uh, so I was poking around there in, in, in town. Oh, this is, I think that picture is probably six, seven years old. Oh, you took this. Yeah, I took that. Picture. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's, um, just one of the many pictures. So every time I'm there, you know, whether it's in Marathon or Marfa or Alpine or, you know, wherever, uh, even if I've already photographed these buildings, I'll photograph them again because the sky's different. There's, oh, yeah. there's a different scene. Just in a side question. Feel. Yeah. Are you using your phone all the time or do you have a uh, DSLR or something? A, a little of both. A little okay. of both. Because uh, people still mix the old cameras, but they're, well, if they're yeah. digital, they're gorgeous. Yeah. And I still, I, I shoot a Canon A1, oh my. which was built in 1974. Just wow. like everything in my life, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that. All, all of my equipment, everything yeah. that I use is, you know, my phone, my, my actual camera. We're a historic preservation yes. guy. Yes. To me, if it's 100 years old, it's just being broken in yeah and getting ready to go stuff you can't replicate you cannot Online, replicate yeah, okay. so yes i do shoot 35 millimeter film wow where you do know, you get that developed anymore i have to send it out to a place in san clemente yeah. california really actually yeah oh, you could wow. do your own dark room. i know um i don't know if christina would let me take <laughs> over that part of the house though she may say no <laughs> what is yeah, that you can do in the no. backyard dear yes, what is exactly. that explosive soup you're doing in there yeah right? exactly yes <laughs> yes uh, i don't know if i could be permitted to do that <laughs> um uh, the the paisano uh i do have an interesting story what about the paisano so as your as your viewers can see when you're looking at this elevation on the far right edge of the building behind those unfortunately behind those italian cypresses the window on the second floor right at the corner is uh is the uh, is of course one of the rooms uh years ago Oh gosh, probably in 05, 06, something like that. I was uh, serving on the board of directors of Preservation Texas, and we had a regional meeting, and it was there in in uh, in Marfa, and so our we met there at the hotel, and that's where we conducted our our meetings and such. So most everybody rented a room at the uh, at the Paisano. Well, you know me being true to form. Uh, driving down from El Paso, I typically don't make, you know, I don't think too far in advance and in you know, a lot of things. And I didn't reserve a room. But when I arrived, um, lo and behold, they had one room remaining. So I was fortunate and, uh, and I was able to rent it. And so when I was uh, registering, the fella told me, you'll like it. It has a cool history. Well, how's that? And he said, that is the room that none other than Elizabeth Taylor stayed in when the crew was here for filming Giant. Now you're interested. And now I was like, wow, I slept in the same room as Elizabeth. We all slept there. We all <laughs> slept there. Yeah, how about that, huh? So <laughs> Not so at the, the same time. Not at the same time. So there's my there's my Elizabeth Taylor story. Oh, now I'm disappointed. Yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't around in that. wasn't big enough. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. well, she was over here at the Hilton at the she time. She was. Here, now yes. at the plaza. Uh, hotel. Nikki, is that right? Nikki, yeah, Nikki Hilton, yeah. Hilton was yeah. her husband. Yeah. And what yeah. used to be the bedroom she stayed in apparently is now just a, a, a hallway. Yeah, there was a, it's a uh, cool place to get up there though. It is. It is. It's really a wonderful building. It, it's something else. So, uh, the that's a trust. That is a trust. Um, All right, back and, out on the trail here. Yeah. Let's get back out on the trail because we keep wandering back into town. Oh yeah. Um, the, the Paisano, uh, like many other, of uh, many of the other hotels within the region, 
also had a period of time where it was not being used, where it was, in essence, uh, closed up, boarded up. And and uh, thank you to the Duncans once again. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for uh, buying that building literally on the courthouse steps across the street. All at an auction? At an auction. Oh, my. And so they bought it. And if I if I remember the story correctly, I'll make uh, one up. There, but I can just make it up. No one's gonna, you know, maybe know the, the difference. The Duncans will know. The Duncans will <laughs> know. So I may be judicious. All right, back to reality. What, 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 what? what? I'm sorry. <laughs> Apparently, they had no intention of that day to buy that hotel. Oh. And it was just like spur of the moment, and yeah. uh, one of these, you're asking how much, and then looking at one another, can we really not? Do this. Take yeah. that. I mean, they're asking for pennies on the dollar or pennies on the one hundred dollar, if you will. I mean, just next to nothing. Yeah. Somebody take this, please. We can't give it to you, but you know, somebody take it. So they almost gave it to him. It's like almost same with the Gage Hotel. You bet. Yeah, and then and then all this and then and then um, you know, all of a sudden it's like, okay, I know I'm gonna have to spend a lot of money to restore it. And and of course, yes, you you have to it's it was too far gone for a long period of time yeah. and now look at it oh it's amazing is, is it's it amazing. busy or do you know it is very busy and the restaurant there um uh which is renowned great restaurant is named jet rink after jimmy dean's character in the movie the giant, giant. Oh my. so it comes back to comes back to the film um when you are a uh, a little place like marfa or alpine or marathon you have to rely on, on, uh, on an attractive building, yeah. good food, and, and the like in order to make people uh, stop, get out of their car, and not just drive through town. Yeah, and Marathon, uh, it's it's I mean not Marathon, excuse me, Marfa. Mm -hmm. Marfa is just amazing. It's like the they call it the Santa Fe of Texas. It is. It's uh, all absolutely. the art and the people that have these homes out there. The property values went way up through the roof. It's absolutely, amazing. yeah. It's a, it's really a remarkable uh, remarkable town something else and 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 they have a very um a very uh diverse uh building types there mm -hmm. and so you know it's really architecturally it's one of the more interesting towns in all of the, oh, yeah. the trans pecos all of the western half of texas really like it well would really. you recommend people uh, when they can to just take a day trip and then the night stay someplace like that i would um i mean you know to me the um one of the best ways to uh, spend a little bit of time is to hop in the car get out here drive out of el paso on i-10 heading east and then when you arrive at van horn uh get off the interstate and get on highway 90 okay and 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 drive old highway 90 down to from van horn down to sanderson you're basically driving parallel to uh, the railroad tracks that that made all of this area uh, possible for development. That's one of your old hangouts. You were at Sol Ross, weren't you? You bet. Yeah. Uh -huh. You bet. Yep. Didn't attend school there, but I spent enough time there. I think I still owe them money for a student loan or two. You never uh, know. <laughs> or books you may have. Books, yeah, yeah, books yeah, I may have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, tuition that way. Yeah, right? there's yeah. something. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. But yes, the um, uh, uh, on a on just kind of a, a to tie off the uh, bit about hotels. Uh, the Gage, uh, the Paisano, the El Capitan, all of these in, in uh, the Trans Pecos of, of West Texas, all of these hotels were grand at one time. Do you know and, if they were? Uh, oh, I was just, and then they were not, and now they are back again. Do you know if they were them. built in a particular order, or how did that occur? Well, there was um, uh, uh, there was a, a hotel chain that had five hotels that uh, Trust and Trust Architects designed uh, the gateway uh, um, the actual name is gateway hotel company i believe was its name so the gateway hotel that's here in downtown mm -hmm. el paso was one of the five so the pesano and el capitan were part of that chain i see and then there are two more in in southern new mexico uh one in douglas and uh i think the others in Deming. Um, I wondered if these had something in common. Right. They do. The gauge, to my knowledge, was not part of that okay. chain, but but nonetheless, they were they were all, uh, yeah, as you can in imagine, the in the in the say in the 1930s, if you're traveling, uh, you're traveling by train, 
And so, uh, you know, once you uh, deboard the train at a place such as Marathon or, or Alpine, um, you know, the hotel is just right across the street. Yeah, the tracks are right across from all these. Right. I get it. Okay. Right. Right. Very interesting. I'm going to take a break here a little earlier. Uh, Troy Ainsworth is in the house. We're talking about trust buildings all over the place, including how they relate back to El Paso in that case. You bet. Very interesting yep. stuff. We've got a few more to go here, so we'll get to those in a minute. You got any Facebook reports? Uh, yeah, let's see. Oh, uh, Margaret Smith, she pointed out the Gage Hotel in 1928 and another of, of uh, Marathon Towns. People got together to see what could be done. And I'm trying to read the whole thing. It's not scrolling down. Right now. Ah, oh, Jim Murphy left oh. a message. I'll get to him. Yeah. After uh, the show. Yeah. No, is it? Come on, screen. <laughs> I'm mouseless. Oh, Margaret put it. Okay, put yeah. It. She says, okay, people get to get, got together to see what could be done about building a hotel since Mr. Gage, uh, had the greatest property holdings and half the cost of his hotel was to be financed by him. And it goes on and on. He right. hired right. and fired. Yeah. And... That comments now up. Uh, Andrew's got him. This new program, he puts them up under the picture. Oh, also I posted uh, a link to the Henry Trost.org, which is Margaret Smith, the, the granddaughter of the Trost of Gustavus Trost. I put her up. So if you want to see more about all the buildings, she has links to all the buildings that they have around the country that they have right it's very helpful right and i'm also also going to post the trost society which is a local group here in el paso that you can join and learn more about trost they do tours and all kinds of great information so i'll post that also and there's separate conversations somebody's talking to mark howe from 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 angie hey hey listen gang listen No. There's a show within the show is that's what's right. happening. That's right. And that's the cool thing is everybody that's gets right. on and starts oh, talking. Right. And yeah, he, they got stuff going on over Yeah, there. and they share their history, and it's it's fun. It's really fun. Taking a break here. We'll be back in just a moment. Hit it, Andrew. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Canteen. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. 
You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. That would be me. I should talk, huh? Okay, yeah, here we go. October 9th, next weekend, coming in here, John Hamilton. Mr. Military Historian around El Paso. He's going to take on the subject of Henry O. Flipper. He was the first black graduate out of West Point. He spent quite a bit of time in El Paso, and one of his skills as an engineer was surveying. So we're going to hear some interesting stories about that guy's career. October 16th, what is the history of Chinese people in El Paso? Our guest is historian Ana Fahey. October 23rd, Ruben Escondon and Roberto Salas. They're going to talk about the history of Smelter Town and Asarco, We've got to keep that before people's minds because it's a huge part of El Paso. And they're likely, he says they're going to have a pilgrimage this year. So that's the other reason to talk to these guys about a week ahead of their pilgrimage up Mount Cristo Rey. October 30th, what is the event known as Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead? And that's Concordia Cemetery associate members coming in. They're going to explain that event at Concordia Cemetery. And we just got confirmed that there will be someone on the second hour from the El Paso County Historical Society to explain their Hall of Honor membership and what they're doing over there. And by, by, by the way, we'll talk about it a little bit later. They have an open house today at Burgess House as part of the tour of homes over there. And November 6th, that's the El Paso Symphony Orchestra Executive Director, Ruth Ellen Jacobson. She's our guest to explain the symphony's history, which includes the fact that the El Paso Symphony is the longest continuously running symphony in Texas. And they used to be on KTSM. That's right. Back in the day. Back how about, in the day. How about that? The El Paso. Oh, wait a minute. I jumped. Where are you going? I have my pages messed up. Oh, I apologize. There it is. Sorry. Changed pages on myself. Go to Mission Del Rey, where uh, Bernie and I did this week, and I had oh, to good. fight from buying more stuff than I could afford. Oh, good. Uh, well, <laughs> well, not good. Well, I, I love Indian fetishes, which are uh, items carved out of stone or bone, and I was like, oh, they have a beautiful one. Uh, go to Mission Del Rey for, to visit their new 12,000-square-foot showroom on Lee Trevino on uh, Mondays through Saturdays from 9 to 5. Bring your family and friends for El Paso's best souvenirs, unique gifts, and rustic decor, and have your picture taken in, in the jail, which I did with Bernie. So <laughs> shop, shop Mexican Talavera. Just a normal day. Just a normal day. Shop Mexican Talavera, Native American artifacts, and thousands of Southwest and Western decor items. And their phone number is 915-440-2140. And the Texas Daughters of the Republic of Texas, the El Paso Rio Grande chapter, will meet on Friday, October 10th at the Greenery Restaurant and Sunland Park, uh, Sunland Park Mall at 11 a.m. And they invite you to come and learn about October 2nd's Come and Take It Day in Texas Independence History, the Battle of Gonzales, and the beginning fight for, uh, which is the beginning fight for Texas Independence, and talk about other Texas Honor Days of Texas history. If you want more information, call Patricia Kidney at 915-591-2326. Man, she got active. She sent me promo after promo yesterday. Well, she's part of that. The daughters, her family oh, goes, yeah. goes way back. So she's a cool. daughter of Texas yeah. or whatever. All right, Troy Ainsworth, got you still here. We're talking about what what number picture here? This would be number, the Occidental. The Occidental. Uh, uh, number ten story. there. Okay. Oh. First, first of all, I'd like to ask both of you: Have you seen this building before in Albuquerque? Have you seen? <sighs> I don't recognize it, but then I don't get to Albuquerque oh. like you you used to do. Okay. Um, the Venetian building. Oh, yeah. Albuquerque's yeah. Venetian building. Driven okay. A couple of times. There you go. Okay. In downtown Albuquerque. Now, this building is one of the, uh, it is an office building designed for an insurance company. And it has a, a remarkable antecedent. So, uh, one of the things that I find incredible about uh, the creativity that that uh, comes into play, not just with Henry, but with the the firm itself, is 
a capacity to look at other um, uh, other places around the world. You don't normally uh, associate Albuquerque, New Mexico with Venice, no. Italy, or even Venice, California, for that matter. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the, uh, the 14th century Doge's Palace that is on Palazzo San Marco oh, yeah. in, in Venice. That's a bizarre building. That is a bizarre building. It is the inspiration, it is the inspiration for this particular insurance company office building in downtown Albuquerque. And the thing that's different about it to me is that that's the midi- middle e- uh, excuse me, medieval architecture mm-hmm. that he's using in it. Yes. And well, how and, did this come about? Um there was a uh, uh, only a couple of years. This building dates from 1916, 1917. Um contemporary to its design was a a, re- a remarkable building um being designed in uh oh my gosh, uh Tulsa or Oklahoma City. It was a a, a commercial building. That, uh, um, although we did not see the influence directly in this design, Trost was aware of it. But simultaneously, uh, his original design was more along the lines of of that commercial building being designed in Oklahoma. But out of the blue, a uh, moment of inspiration and a willingness by the client. You know, what if we, what if we um, look at a different building, a, a one that's. Um, pretty elegant and has stood the test of time and is located in a very interesting city in Europe. What's that? How about over at Venice, Italy? Hmm. Intrigue. So what go happened? Yeah. What happened is what can go wrong? I mean, Albuquerque, we have a lot of Adobe buildings. Let's do something. <laughs> this different. is very different than this Adobe. This is very different. And, um, along in about 1972, there was a very interesting write up about this building because, uh, it, it had long, you know, it, it was just a whimsical building. By that time, it was just a whimsical building. In Tell Albuquerque. me it's still standing. It is. It okay, is. It's, it is extant. And and by the early 1970s, uh, a lot of memory had been lost about it. Oh. Okay. So there was a big write-up. I believe it was in the Albuquerque Journal or in a, uh, in a publication about uh, architecture in New Mexico. And it was dubbed Ar- uh, Albuquerque's Venetian Building. Wow. And, it, and it is, um, it, it's a, a block east of, uh, yes, a block east of Central Avenue. Okay. It, so it's near, it's near an, another commercial building. The First National Bank building is just uh, down the block from it. Um, that Trust and Trust designed, which is very much in keeping with many of their multi-story commercial buildings that you see in El Paso. And so you and, do have a lot of stuff in Northern New Mexico. There Cindy, is, there is. About, yeah. Now the yeah. State Historic Preservation Office in Santa Fe is very interested in in cataloging and elevating the knowledge and awareness of trust and trust architecture in new mexico because uh, to be honest yeah um the the preponderance and and uh, i'm holding up a, a list here um the preponderance of of the firm's buildings do uh, they were built in texas okay so it makes very good sense to uh, prioritize texas oh, architecture so. through the lens of trust and trust but as the question was earlier, how much, uh, how many buildings were designed by the firm in northern Mexico, New Mexico, and well, both and Mexico, yeah, okay, yeah, and yeah. Mexico, and in Arizona, and uh, there's uh, at least uh, projects so that were in in Kansas and Colorado, Colorado as I think, well, yeah, yeah. right. So, so, um, interesting. When, uh, uh, getting back to the Holt residence that we looked at earlier, um, the fact that that it was um, uh, in, there in Las Cruces, the one that has the uh, Chinese pagoda right. in, in appearance. Um, this is it right here. As far as drawing upon Venice as a as an inspiration and and fully executing a building, this is it for trust and trust. We got to take a break here, but I did hear someone say I think it was Max who said basically the uh, the trust people design buildings in downtown El Paso, sort of like the Beatles' White Album. That it's is something different everywhere you look, yeah. that everywhere is, you turn. It's a Max different has song. said that before. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that, what, a, what a great analogy. We can do any type of music, and we can record a great song based on any type of musical and style. That's what Trust did in and building. That's what Trust was doing. As and well. El Paso's got most of it left. Out of what forty yeah. some odd, they got twenty seven or eight uh, along that line. Yeah, oh, in boy. the downtown district. That's can you I, imagine if they kept all of them? Oh no, I mean, and and the thing is, you um, 
you lament what is lost and you protect what you can what you have let's do that all right taking a break here one more time here you want to have a report later or now oh i've got abanero diza or deezer deezer abanero who I, I love his name he asked about the paisano and he well actually kind of made a comment double is he a chili he's a chili yes he's very hot El Capitan. El Ca yeah. The, well, yeah. The El Capitan Hotel. It, he was asking if Trost and Trost had designed it. And I just answered him on that. And uh, James Kasich, he's in, of South Central Avenue. Not quite sure what he means. South of Central Avenue. South of, oh, South of Central Avenue. Oh, okay. South. Okay, I beg your pardon. That. Okay. Beg it's your pardon. Hard to keep up with these conversations. Yeah, correcting They're going you fast go. today. That's okay. This is the professor. Well, Man, it's like I messed up with the, yeah. the Lodge Hotel. That's in Cloudcroft. And yep. I, I, said, well, I, I, mumbled, what, I mumbled it after that. I wonder <laughs> what you thought about that. Okay, yeah, anyway. Mumbled, yeah. Back into reality. Should we take a break? Yes. And come back with ink. You watch this. This is going to be fun. Okay. All right. Taking a break here. Back in a moment. Monterey Asset Management is proud. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate, call certified property manager Ray Baca, 915-592-4549, 592-4549. Here's the deal. When you combine State Farm Home and Auto Insurance, you save an average of $889. State Farm agent Ralph Dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in El Paso. Call 915-581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020, with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. This week, go to El Paso Inc. and find the latest in El Paso business news. The El Paso Community Foundation has purchased a building on the east side as part of its effort to boost resources for people with special needs in the region. A locally owned wholesale grocer opens its second location this weekend. El Paso entrepreneurs adopt a century-old corner store in Central, and they plan renovations. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., order it online at elpasoinc.com. Stephanie Valle is in for Saul Signs this week on ABC7 Extra, and they're talking about social media and its detrimental effect on developing minds. (laughs) We have all suspected that too much social media can be toxic, especially for kids and teens and me and Melissa. Yeah. Growing up, in the, that really wasn't in the script. No, my head's rolling. It's been anyway, a crazy week. Yeah. Growing up in the age of social media is vastly different than anything other generations have experienced. Join Stephanie Valle as she explores the effects of social media on teenagers and small children, which they don't mention there. Oh, boy. Be sure to tune in this Sunday at 1035 p.m. for ABC7 Extra. We got a guy with uh, kids. What are you? You're under 10? 12 and 9. Oh, my God. You're right in the middle. Yes. How's this? How's Troy Ainsworth? How's this done with them? Um, minimal damage, but, uh, we're not releasing our safety guards, if you yes. will. Yeah. We oh. have to, I mean, the, the, the kids are adapting well. They're, they're, thank you for asking. They're, yeah, they're well. doing well, but, but, uh, yeah, too much time on the computer. Can yeah, be... I think, I think what this has changed from is from TV used to be a babysitter to now social media. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Little tiny kids with, you know, pods and, 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 and yeah. don't let them loose on YouTube. My YouTube. goodness. All right. Sorry. All right. Back to reality here. We have uh, lures tower in Phoenix. And that was the, the number 12 there, Andrew. Lures Tower, what is this all about? Okay, the um, first of all, I really like this picture postcard of the Lures Tower. There it is. And it located in downtown Phoenix. And, and um, I'm, I'm glad the, uh, the individual corrected me. Yes, Central Avenue um, in Albuquerque runs east and west. The they, people are listening <laughs> to you. They're listening. And so I misspoke. So I, I thank uh, the, uh, the one who corrected me. Uh, this looks familiar for some reason. Yes, it should look familiar. Uh, if anyone is familiar with downtown El Paso, you're familiar with the O.T. Bassett Tower. I now, these two buildings are, um, as with our earliest example that we showed at the beginning of the, the program, the, uh, Smith, uh, the Mark Smith House in Tucson and the Douglas Gray residence here in El, uh, in El Paso. Well, they're almost carbon copies of one another. Okay? The guy you hear in the background is Andrew. Andrew, <laughs> we hear you. Anyway, keep going, Troy. So the the uh, Smith House and the Gray House are are identical. Okay, different locations, but identical. The Lures Tower and the Bassett Tower are practically identical. One's in Phoenix, and one, of course, is here in El Paso. And you've been up in the Bassett Tower. Have you been up in this one? I have not actually. But I, I've not been in the Lures Tower. As you go up there, those mm-hmm. those floors get kind of tiny. They do. They the setbacks at, uh, at the oh. ninth and the twelfth floors. Um, yeah, so yeah, you are reducing um, space the, uh, a lot of uh, yes, Which, big reduction. And you and I together could touch both sides. Yes, it's it's a little harrowing. Oh my, I'm thinking yeah. way way up here. But now what what is really interesting is that when when uh, Henry was on site for uh, he was there. Uh, this building was constructed 1928, dedicated in 1930. Um, when he was on site. He had a visit. Now, whether the story is true, apocryphal, somewhere in between. Oh, where's this going? He and Sabe. But apparently, he had a visit from an old friend. An old friend who had an architectural studio not too terribly far from downtown Phoenix. A guy that he worked with, with uh, the architect, Louis Sullivan, and the engineer, uh, uh, Adler Dankmar. 
in Chicago. And that architect was a guy named Frank Lloyd oh, yeah. Wright. He visited. Visited because Taliesin West is located of course. right nearby. So <clears throat> what did the two old guys talk about? I give up what? Well, I don't know either. However, I can make some things up, but uh -huh. <laughs> I would imagine they talked about the good old days in Chicago. They talked about uh, Liebermeister, Louis Sullivan, the great architect, and they probably discussed projects and, and reminisced and such. Um, uh, getting back to your social media reference. Oh, yeah. Okay. If, if we had had that capability today, that if we or had it then, mm -hmm. Someone would have held up a phone and recorded the two of them, oh yeah, audio and 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 uh, and visually, and <clears throat> we would have a record of what they what they were wearing, what they where they stood, what they talked about, and it, it would was, have been wonderful. It was it's, at that place in Phoenix. It, it's at that location right there in downtown Phoenix. All right, um, we, let's move on to the uh, La Tuna. La Tuna. La Tuna. Okay, now I actually, when driving into town this morning, I actually did drive past. Uh, this uh federal wave friends. yeah wave at my friends yeah wave at all my friends and how many people had told the story that thought it was a hotel a lot of people mm -hmm. uh can have, i get a room here yeah commit uh, a felony yes commit a felony <laughs> a federal offense and you're more than we'll we'll put you up into lodgings you know it's kind of interesting because <clears throat> research has uh has, has shown that this building is not a is probably not designed by henry trost why because it's designed by his brother Gus. Gus okay. Rose. Yes, Gus is, I believe, the architect. Gustavus. Yes, Gustavus is the... Uh, He's the, the other architect. Right. And so this uh, this project is actually 1931-32, uh, and, and Henry's life does end yeah. the following year. Now, now that may be may have no bearing on the fact that Gus designed the building. Of it course, is a trost. Right? But it is a trost. Okay. And I suppose <clears throat> if you were going to find yourself in... in uh, federal accommodations. Uh, <laughs> this this uh, particular building is one of the most elegant and beautiful buildings uh, at a prison. I mean, it is a, yeah. let's call it for what it is, it is a prison. It's a minimum security, is minimum it Minimum security, I believe that's correct. But It's still a prison. But <laughs> yeah. You ain't going nowhere. But no matter how elegant it looks, um, let us not forget a wise observation made by a philosopher from Mobile, Alabama, who once observed that no matter what, you do not want to go to jail. And that is by none other than Captain Jimmy Buffett. This is very important. Even <laughs> if the building is beautiful, you do not want to go to jail. Yeah, I get that. But you yep. also have a little sketch of it there, right? The next picture? Yes, isn't that wonderful? Uh, so here's the basic idea that is uh, sketched out. And uh, on this particular drawing, uh, edges of it are all torn, which makes it even more interesting, I think. And Where does that piece of paper live? I believe it is here at the Downtown Public Library. I okay. Think. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an extant drawing. And La Tuna, um, a very expansive uh, prison, excuse me, federal correctional institution. Yes. Yes, as, as it is officially known. Plopped out in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert at Anthony... New Mexico. Well, why would uh, they put right it near? I'm sorry. Why would they put it there? Because think, they could. I, because they could. Yeah, land yeah. is cheap. Um, we don't have a place like Alcatraz Island. Um, Isolate know. you in the desert. Yes. If you, you get escape, away, you're going to go nowhere. Where are you going to head to? Where are you going? Now you can head right down to Pepe's, but that's you a, could. <laughs> that's <laughs> you a, could. That's you a could. different matter. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game. But um, um, a federal correction institution, and you can see the incredible. Uh, inspiration from from spain in this building i mean you have a very interesting spanish colonial uh, design uh, uh salamanca spain in particular so that's a big place it is a big place and unfortunately it means that they probably have a you know uh limited occupancy because they all the rooms are taken yeah which is not a good thing but a beautiful building but they have a lot of fields out there they grow stuff and yeah. Harvest something, and and it is interesting. I was I was told one time because of all the drawings that are uh, of Trust and Trust uh, buildings, there's an extensive extensive collection of drawings in the downtown public library, and for a long period of time, 
these drawings were available for the for the prison. They were available for public viewing until it became clear some <laughs> of the people who were wanting to see them were trying to find a way to break, uh, them out. To break someone out. Um, ah, so you cannot, oh. uh, unfortunately, you cannot have a look at these drawings. The uh, um, they're just would be cool. Though. They have been set aside from public purview. Well, that building is now changing as of a groundbreaking this week. It's going to turn into the uh, Mexican American Cultural Center. So who knows what's oh, going to be a le uh, left to look at? We're taking a break Quite here right. on the El Paso City Radio Show. Troy Ainsworth. Come back and wrap it up at the Gage Hotel, we'll which you mentioned, more. but we didn't really explain. Yeah, we'll get a little more into it. You bet. Indeed, it would do that. And you, you got a Facebook uh, crowd going on or anything? Oh, yes. I was, we've got, let me bit, bounce back there. I was looking at the Trost, uh, the henrytrost.org site, which I posted on our Facebook read feed. Uh, oh, she says, Gustavus also designed the residence and the property. He traveled to Washington, D.C. to work with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. So, okay. A residence. Thank you. Thank that's you, Margaret. Margaret Smith. Yeah, that's Margaret. Yeah. Uh, it, what? No, it's Texas. Oh, it's in Texas. It's, it's, Anthony, it's, Texas. Yeah, it's right on the border. You've I got probably to to, said New yeah. Mexico. No, I probably said it. Well, I, we, we, I've never had a room. Anthony, Texas. Well, never, one of us will take discredit for it. I've never that? had a room there, so instead of so, yeah, I wasn't, that. Me neither. Taking right. a break back in a moment. Do it, Andrew. <laughs> Here's the deal. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas. And live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee Trevino. Enter on Pelicano. Go to missiondelrey.com or call 915-440-2140 for Mission Del Rey Southwest. This radio show is now streaming on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Barbara Given Bainey. We still archive the audio of these radio shows on ephistory.com. And you can go there online and find our radio shows for the last several years. Go to ephistory.com and access the El Paso History Radio Show archives for every Saturday radio show back to early 2016. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. El Paso History TV is now available for free on YouTube.com. Take a look at recent ABC7 News reports by Bernie Sargent on El Paso History TV about Waco Tanks, the Franklin Mountains, Concordia Cemetery, and more. The YouTube channel also has more than 100 videos about El Paso history with lectures, documentaries, and various history clips. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV and find out how Texas history begins in El Paso. Monterey Asset Management is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, maybe you should invest in real estate. Monterey Asset manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the new website, m1ep.com m numeral one ep.com to learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation of investing in real estate call certified property manager ray baca 915-592-4549 592-4549 here's the deal when you combine state farm home and auto insurance you save an average of 889 dollars state farm agent ralph dickerson is ready to help you combine home and auto and save here in el paso call 915- 581-0000 today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Average annual per household savings based on a 2019 national survey by State Farm of new policyholders who reported savings by switching to State Farm. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live with video right here on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. 
Our live streaming on Facebook started on November 21st, 2020 with our tribute to Leon Metz, which you can now listen to here on our Facebook page, El Paso History Radio Show. Scroll down our page to find that archive in our videos section. You are listening to a break in our Facebook streaming of the El Paso History Radio Show, which airs live on KTSM AM 690 in El Paso, Texas, and live right here now on our El Paso History Radio Show page on Facebook.com. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Western, Native American, and Mexico items for gifts and decor. Bring your friends and mention you heard us on the radio for a store-wide discount. Mission Del Rey Southwest, 1421 Lee. Almost out of time, but we should tell you, Friday, October 29th, 7 p.m., O'Goffin Home is having an evening tour. Bit unusual, but it's ghost season, so get a hold of them at 533-5147. The Sunset Heights Tour of Historical Homes is on today, and it starts at 12 o'clock, just in a few minutes, and it'll run till 4 p.m., and it's uh, they're going to six homes, so the cost is $5. The tickets are available to G, uh, Hal Marcus Gallery and also at the Bassett House, Burgess House, and that's at 603 West Yandel. So get out there and just follow the signs to the tour. Great tours over there. All right, Troy, you got about a minute and a half here. What's up? Minute and a half. All right. Gage, uh, we sort of talked about gauge is important. You have a thing next week. We Yes, uh, we mentioned the gauge. And just to reiterate, um, uh, October 8, 9, and 10, there will be a, a conference at the, at the Gage Hotel yeah. there in Marathon. Um, basically, it's a, a large historical overview of the region. If you are interested, please look at the Gage Hotel. Uh, search them up on Google. All the information will be present. Oh, on their there. site? Uh, yes, on their site. What does yes. all mean about trust? What does it mean? All right. Well, uh, so El Paso is the hub for much of the uh, firm's work. So on the periphery, away from El Paso, there is a, an inordinate number of, of projects that were uh, executed, completed, and remain standing. Out of all the buildings that we looked at today, all but two of them uh, remain. They're, oh. they're extant. And, and so the important thing is... Um, we often, as we talked about at the beginning, we often speak about a regional identity for Trost and Trost architects. And yes, they did work in a particular region, the, the Southwest and Northern Mexico. So, but we have to get beyond thinking in, in kind of these um, bottled up terms. In concluding their book, the, uh, the, the wonderful book that the El Paso Public Library published in 1981, on uh, Henry Trost, architect mm -hmm. of the Southwest. The Engelbrechts uh, made a statement. And they said, if you haven't figured it out by now, you can, you can tell that we consider the work of Henry Trost not to be just of a regional interest, but these are national treasures. Yeah. And that's really important. They're national. Not just a, a fanciful building in western Texas or southern New Mexico. So that's the really important important thing that we ought to remember. They're worth protecting. They're worth preserving. They're wonderful. See you at Pepe's Troy Ainsworth. Thank you. Melissa, I'll you're see not you guys make next it. week. No, I well, got a Bernie. meeting. I got to get ready for You think for Bernie's it. out there? Fair enough. Uh, he's, yeah, he's heading out there right And now. thank you in the control room, Andrew J. Polk, thank Monday you. through Friday, Talk El Paso, and he can talk El Paso. Talk to him on AM 690. See you all next week. Thank you for joining us.